Welcome to another edition of Reflections. We're very pleased today to have one of the oldest residents of Commonwealth of Massachusetts as our guest today. But before we start the program, I'd like to mention, since this program is sponsored by the Beverly Historical Society, that a new book has just been published, a part of the Images of America series by Acadia Press, and it will be hitting the newsstands very, very, very soon. Includes about 140 photographs from the Historical Society collection with a lot of good copy and a lot of information. Charlie, we have a special guest today. If you'd like to introduce your mother. Um, for the listening audience, this is my mother, Aquilina, known in Beverly as Uckle, Aquilina Bucci, wife of Charles Bucci, leader of Bucci's Lousy Band, the 13 Black Cats, and several other organizations. This is the third program in a series. We've Thank done you. two programs with Charles, and now we finish the series by doing a program with his mother. We have here, Aquilina, we have a photograph of you in the second grade. Second grade. And you're about seven years old? Yes, I think. And where was the picture taken? In the school. Where? In Second Avenue in Derry, Pennsylvania. Did you like school? Not then, uh, then I did, yes. <laughs> As I got older, I didn't. <laughs> now you learned to sew I learned. In, 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 in grammar school. I learned, school. I had good teachers. You learned to sew in grammar school, tell us why. I learned to make uh, little afghans for uh, the soldiers that were at war in 1916, 18. And the teachers, we made little blocks, but the teachers put all the little blocks together and made a big blanket for the soldier. Now that, for the audience, is World War I. Mm -hmm. My dad was in France, uh -oh. so he might have used the blanket. He oh, no, might that's have. right. <laughs> um, I, can't, I can't remember the colors. <laughs> uh, Charles, the second picture is a picture of you and your mother that was in the newspaper. A good picture of you, Charles. <laughs> that oh, was celebrating yeah. um, the 100th, her 100th birthday at Uville. We were at uh, uh, where my mother is uh, living now in uh, Lexington, Massachusetts. They had a special party for her, they gave her a hat, had a cake and all. And, That's a great uh, photograph. <laughs> took a photograph of both of us. That's a wonderful photograph. Thank yeah. you. Now this picture here, Aquilina, you were? I probably was 15 or 16 years old and must have been at a wedding. And they took pictures of the cousins, the two cousins and my sister, older sister. Show her, where's your older sister, Mom? Huh? Can you point out? Which I one think is our older sister older is right sister? in front my of her. My older sister is uh, in front of Over her. there, beside me. Yeah, yeah. And these are the two cousins on this other side. They all look like they're related, don't mm -hmm. they? You were quite a flapper, it looks yes, like. Yes, I in that was. Picture, huh? <laughs> but I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> now, this photograph here is in Beverly. Yes. And you're with two children. I have. Uh, my oldest daughter, Beatrice and Charles, are there. And we're uptown. Uh, I forget the name of that. Well, the, near the library, mm -hmm. someplace there. We were walking to the beach. We had no car. <laughs> Where did you live at that time? I was living in uh, Cabot Street, uh, 46 Cabot Street. <laughs> when she came to Beverly, she started at Front Street. She yeah. lived with her... Uh, I lived with my aunt when I first got here. That's where and, I was born. And then as the family grew, we had to move and we got our own apartment on uh, Cabot Street. Now, Mrs. Bucci, you and Charles lived over the store for a while. Yes, we did. Yeah. For a, few, a year and a half, anyhow. 
Did, you, did Charles's brother live with you? Yes, he did. And what was his name? Raymond, Raymond Bucci. Yeah. And your uncle loaned Charles the money to yes, start the business? Yes, my uncle put us in business. Why? He loved my husband and he thought he was a good uh, salesman. He thought he'd do well and he did. He How did much money well. did he give you? Hmm? How much money did he give you? Uh, I can't remember, probably $3,000. I love this picture, Aquilina. Mm -hmm. This is in front of the store, Bucci's Market on Rantoul Street. And somebody yes. has a broom and somebody's standing beside her. And that's my son, Charles. <laughs> and B. Beatrice is I got the, doing the broom, sweet, learning to sweep. The kids worked in the market, <laughs> is that the point? Well. They were there a lot because the business was small then. But after they grew, they didn't go down anymore. Now this is Gloria Market across the way. And the, and the um, apartment house, Charles, is still there, just like in the picture. Yeah. I think and, it uh, is. And you mentioned that... It the, used to be the, I think now it's a wine cellar. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. 1931, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking earlier, uh, Aquilina, that your husband Charles carried people during the Depression. Yes, he did. Many, many. They all promised to pay when they got a job, and some did, some couldn't. Mm -hmm. So. Now, now, you were right in the, in the middle of the Italian American section. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. So, were most of your customers Italian American? Well, not most. We had a few, mm. but we had others that came from Ralph's side and Beverly Farms. They came from everywhere mm. once they got acquainted. And what was the reason your market became so successful? They loved the good food that he carried, and he tried to do the best and give it to them the way they wanted it. And especially the meat, they would ask for it to cut thin or heavier in slices. He did it for them. And your job was? Cashier. <laughs> I understand you could add figures very quickly. Well, we put up contests and I won a few. <laughs> you like math in school? <laughs> yes, I did. I'll bet you did. Yeah. Yeah. Charles, you used to make Trips for the market, errands. I, 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 when I learned to drive, when I drove, uh, I, I learned to drive by driving the truck. Uh, we'd had free deliveries, and we had, um, I'd say, a hundred people would call in their order. An awful lot of people never get, never saw the store. They stayed at home, called up. We shopped as, as we would for ourselves, for them. We'd pick out the best vegetables and everything else throw it into the box and uh, bring the order to them, free delivery. An awful lot of people bought that concept. They, they needed that. They, they were raising children. They couldn't get out. Now, do you think you were one of the few markets that did that? I know Henry's market did it later. I, th I think there were quite a few that had to do it. Okay. I think quite a few yeah. did what, it, too. It was the, kind the of, norm. Yeah, what kind of a vehicle did you drive? Well, I don't know what it was. Charles well, we had an open truck at one time, but I drove a uh, closed panel truck, a panel truck. Yeah. Now, one of the uh, events in your daughter's life was being caught in the Andrea Doria when it went down in the yes. Atlantic. She was a nurse and decided to go see her brother in Italy. And they told her she was came back. She didn't go over on the Andrea Doria, but she wanted to come back. A, the best ship, but it didn't turn out to be the best in the end. It uh, sank in it was a uh, collision. Yeah. Uh, in uh, Nantucket. Did she get wet? She got <laughs> saved. <laughs> she had to come down a rope and get in a little rowboat, and, and you, and, you and Charles knew nothing about this. He drove down to no, New York to get we her. No, we went to New York. Uh, drove down at night because we were going to be there the first thing in the morning to go pick her up. And when we got to the dock, 
There was only one man there, no boat. Oof. And he said, what are you doing here? And we said, we came to pick up our daughter. He said, oh, what ship? We said, the Andradorian. And he says, that went down. What was your reaction? Oh, terrible, mm. terrible. When did you find out she was all right? Hmm? When did you find out she was all right? Hmm. How long after that? Well, we had to go around. They said, uh, go back home and listen to the TV or radio and you'll find out more about what had happened. Now, Charlie, you were saying there was no radio in the car. No yeah. radio in the car. So how did they find out, do you think? Did, you, did they tell you to go to um, a, a radio, get, find a radio, find a... Yes, they said look for a radio or... If, well, no, they really said go home. That's but a long, we went, that's a we long went, way. We <laughs> went to a bar room and uh, we called home and they had heard okay. about the ship and they told us and we were all waiting to hear good news, but we couldn't find anything couldn't find out anything, so they, night came and they put us up in a hotel. And then the next day they said, go, uh, some, some were saved, not all were gone down. And so we had to find out later that she was still uh, alive. Now she was 26 years old. Yes. And this is a photograph of the family gathering when she got home. Mm -hmm. Charles's picture is up here in the right because yes, he's in it Italy. Is. In 1956, uh -huh. there's your husband, yeah. Charlie, and here's you over here beside I'm him. I'm in the middle there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And these are basically what, family All or neighbors? Good friends or what? and family. No, friends too. Friends yeah. and family. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. happened was they. Um, when my sister came down the gangplank, uh, she was uh, so intent on, she was taking care of a young boy. My, my mother and father had been told she was on the Stockholm. So when the Stockholm pulled in, they listened and they announced as each of the people came down. Isn't that correct? They announced that when the people came down the gangplank, they would announce. My sister was so caught up in taking care of a young boy, she forgot to give her name. So all the people had come off, mm. and my mother yeah. and father still. They never there. gave her name. They never gave her name. Yeah. When they finally got together, the Salvation Army and other people said that we they would give her a dress. She still had an oil-stained dress from the uh, wreck. You can mm. see the oil here. On and the, yeah, uh, on they the said, dress. forget the whole thing. They got her in the car and they took off, went home. They didn't want anything but to get home. You must have been very relieved. Yes, it was a big relief. Yeah. Yeah. And this is your son Charles with no, Dick? Fred. Fred, I'm sorry. Fred. Fred, number 73 with, with Dick, Dick Carr. Carr. Mm -hmm. And they're playing football at Columbia mm -hmm. University. Yes. That's a nice photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I was going to ask my mother, uh, if it, when my brother played high school football, did you ever go to any games? No. Never went to any Never games. Never had time. Did my dad go to, did dad go to any not, games? Not too many. If he, he did, one or two. He worked in the store. Yeah. When my brother played for Columbia. They were, we never missed a game. Never missed a game. <laughs> yeah. now, unfortunately, uh, Freddie passed away in an yes, accident. Yes, he did. On and, the 4th of July. <laughs> and this is him going in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, his. Just uh, a few years ago. Yes. And there's Charles, straight on, mm -hmm. and that's Dave Jellison yeah. presenting the plaque to you. Yeah. That must have felt good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, your, your husband, I'm told, was a pretty good singer. Yes, he was. He entertained a lot. <laughs> and the Akavadis liked him because he could sing. Yes, they did. They loved his song. He sang a lot of Italian songs, as well as the English. <laughs> Fred, you might ask my mother if he ever sang to her. <laughs> oh, Did he, he serenade ser you? He serenaded me when we were courting. <laughs> Did he do it in Italian or English? Oh, mostly Italian songs, because his teacher would come with him, and he was a, an Italian, and a, another friend, and the three of them would come 
and play under the, my window. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> That's sweet. So fashion. <laughs> and, your, and your father said, if you're going to marry him, you're going to have to be a good cook. <laughs> yeah, my mother told me that. <laughs> she said he's a good eater. <laughs> he was always he loves to eat. <laughs> he was always roly poly. poly. <laughs> yes, he was. There's a wonderful picture of Bucci's <laughs> lousy band. Late in life, I think, Charles. Looking uh, at Charles. I'd photograph. say uh, when your 40th wedding anniversary, that would be 1968. 68. And we are identified, thanks to you two, Vernon Cormier, way over here, All right? Tony Kamada playing the drum. Uh, no, Joe, Joe Dr. McGinnis and the Joe trumpet. Doc McGinnis. And what's the Joe old? DiLorenzo. Joe DiLorenzo playing the clarinet. clarinet. Second guy in, I think. The owner of Denver Sport Yacht Club. Club. And in back here, and I didn't see him, and I'm glad you pointed out, was Jack Carr. Yeah. Dick Carr's uh, older brother. Trombone player. Excellent. And the fellow with the playing the bass drum. That uh, was Tony uh, Kamada. Oh, yeah. that's Tony Kamada. Yeah, symphony. Okay. The Boston Symphony Orchestra. And the fellow on the right is Bob Lunn. Mm. That was a pretty good band then. Yeah. Why there was it was called the Lousy Band? That well, was a very good, good band. <laughs> they got too good. For the lousy. <laughs> they got rid of the lousy people. And the they were lousy when they started, <laughs> but they got to be very, very good. And the Lousy good. Band, they changed the name <laughs> and put it on the drum to just Bucci's Band. Mm. Uh, yeah. Looks like he fired his brothers. <laughs> <laughs> the original, uh, some of the original band was, uh, we were at a uh, wake last night, Fred. Yes. And a woman came up and uh, talked to my mother and she remembers almost the first visit of Bucci's band. It was Christmas Eve. My brother, myself, my father, a guy named Bruno Tassi uh, uh, showed up at her house on Christmas Eve, she was in her mother's house, pardon me, her mother's house, she was in a wheelchair, and my father had us play uh, Christmas carols for her. And she remembered that, and she has a picture uh, that we have Bona. on that occasion. Mrs. Bona. <laughs> That's nice. That was Mrs. Bona. Well, one of the things we, we know, and, and we mentioned in the last program, is that he also went to hospitals and huh. to kids that had problems, as Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. It wasn't just the parade and yeah, yeah, yeah. He played. We told him to go to the hospital, but he wanted to wait for January after he did all his Christmas That's things. He then he'd go to the hospital, but it was too late. That's the year he died. Yeah, you think uh, the thing I was going to ask uh, Mom was her participation. He was Santa Claus for thirty years. What did she do? Mm. What did you do? Hmm? What did you do? He was Santa Claus oh. for 30. What did you do? I had to brush his beard and wash his uniform and get everything ready. He had two of them, I understand. <laughs> he did. He ended up with two. Yeah. God, he must have loved that. Uh, huh? He just loved people. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And they loved him. Yeah. He also was a leader. People respected yes, him. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because uh, even the Jewish, uh, he was uh, picked as the man of the year for the temple. The neighbor. Jewish temple. Yeah. yeah, they loved him. This is a picture of your 100th birthday party, and these are your grandchildren. I think so. How many grandchildren? 16, well, she said. Well, they. Uh, Grandchildren, there's 16, but then the in-laws are in there, and that makes it 32. <laughs> now, the two LeClaire girls are either side of you, hmm? Joyce and... Joyce and Joanne. Joanne. Yeah. Who were some of the others? Some of the others are the, all of the LeClaire's there, Janet, Jean, uh, uh, Donnie, Bobby, Dennis, uh, Kenny, who else? Janet. <laughs> she, got, she mentioned Janet. Janet. She Janet. Mentioned Janet. Oh, Janet's up here. Yeah. yeah. I have to look. <laughs> yeah. Quite a group. Yes, it is. And They're as, all very good. And as Charles, nice children. As Charles said, they've all done very well. There we are. Yeah. 
Must be proud of them. Mm, I am. A lot of them uh, take the time to go down and uh, see her and you, Bill, and play cards with her and yeah. uh, bring meals down and cook meals. And they're very good about uh, taking care of their grandmother. Very nice. I remember I them am as blessed. As students in high school a lot. I'm blessed. Them. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very nice picture at Charlie and your fortieth wedding anniversary. Thank you, yes. And this is Bob LeClaire, mm -hmm. Beatrice, and Charlie and you and my wife my Barbara. Barbara and Charlie, who looks oh, yeah. very different in that photograph for some reason. <laughs> Much thinner, I guess. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> tell me, tell me about the 40th anniversary. Anything you remember? It was a nice you? party. A lot of relatives there too. And where did we have it? Huh? Where did we have it? I can't remember. French club. Oh, the French club. Yes, the French club. Is that still in existence? <laughs> yes, it is. it is. Yes, it is. Is it? Down on uh, Park, Park Street. Street. Still there? Yeah. 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 When you uh, lived in Beverly with a lot of people who were your friends, who were some of the people you want to mention? I know you well, went to a wake of a I had the, the Malay family. Yes. The children were very good, and they babysat my children. And I had the Tossi family. That uh, uh, I had uh, Nancy and Dina. They babysat my children, and I knew. Uh, Charlie Ivana and his wife Martha and uh, who else was in there? You mentioned Coletti and Landolfi. Oh yeah, the yeah. Colettis. The Landolfis and, uh, you were very close to. And the Landolfis were very, very good friends. The Achavati girls and uh, ooh, there's so many. Now you mentioned the Dearborn Ave neighborhood. The Dearborn Avenue, I uh, had real good neighbors. I had the Carnivales, the Poole, the Russells, the, uh, what was Murphy, the, right next door. The Murphys, right next door. Birchstead. Birchstead, and, and uh, how about uh, the Wilkinson's? Wilkinson, very well, that, close, you know, yeah. she's very she, close. She's got everybody on the yeah, street, that's yeah. <laughs> Very close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we yeah. played with uh, Richard and Jackie sure. Wilkinson. Very, sure. very nice people. Yeah. The children got along real good with each other. Beverly uh, was a pretty good place to raise children. Yes, it was, mm. I thought. Mm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I uh, uh, mentioned was uh, Fourth of July. Um, we had a pretty good sized lot and our lot faced the high school. So there was a blank field out there uh, behind the high school. And every Fourth of July, my dad would uh, wait until four in the afternoon and go to the fireworks store and uh, buy them out. In other words, uh, since they, uh, the day was over, he'd buy whatever they had. And we had great displays because he'd go to two or three stores and box loads of sky rockets, fireworks, uh, Roman candles, everything. And all the kids in the neighborhood, of course, would be there. Charlie Bucci was a popular guy. He was a popular <laughs> guy. He bought his way. <laughs> he kids. bought his way to popularity. Oh, God. Do you remember the bonfires up in North Beverly? Oh, I, I remember yeah. the bonfires in Danvers. Yes. Danvers yes. was, and yes. North Beverly both, but yeah. Danvers was, I think, the bigger one. I, yeah. I could yeah. be wrong. Yeah. In the new book I talked about at the beginning of the program, there's a picture of the bonfire in oh, North Beverly. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there's a picture of Bucci's lousy band. Yeah. Bucci's That's lousy band too. was everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Salem News article on your 100th birthday. Wife of Beverly's original Santa turns 100. <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> I don't feel 100. <laughs> That's good. Aquilina Bucci, former owner of Bucci's Market on Rantoul Street and wife of Beverly's original Santa Claus, turned 100 on Tuesday. Asked for her secret for her long life, she said, I like to eat a lot. <laughs> Do you still have a good appetite? They always tell me. But I eat fast. <laughs> I do too. Uh, her genes might have something to do with it. Her own mother lived to 102. I'd never thought I'd reach 100. I never sat around and thought about it, she said. I'm very healthy. Mm -hmm. Whatever Bucci's secret, uh, secrets are, they must be working. She still plays poker, whist, pinochle, 
and is learning to play bridge. <laughs> I'm still learning, she said. She was born in Derry, Pennsylvania, 45 miles east of Pittsburgh. She recalled growing up with six sisters and mm -hmm. two brothers mm -hmm. in a bit cramped and very different. Very good. <laughs> and there's a picture of you with the uh, two Leclerc, uh -huh. your granddaughters, and I think that picture is probably your wedding picture down below, but it's kind of blurry. Yeah. Well, you've seen a lot happen in 100 years. Very nice. Mm. What stands out? Very nice. Yeah. Okay. What, what stands out? What, what is your best memory? For 100 years. My For 100 best. years. Well, being happy and having all the people around me that are very good. They love me and I love them. So love is the key, Charlie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love them all. Even today at Uville, yeah. you have people that are having a good time with you. Yeah. Yeah. I love them all. Good. <laughs> I told them they're my family now. <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, uh, we're very glad to have had you Thank on the you. program. And uh, uh, your family will get a DVD. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, that will be recorded for posterity. Okay. Thank you, Charles, for bringing your mother in. A real pleasure. Thank and you for having us. And doing the other two programs as well. Thank you. And uh, it's an honor for us to have you today. Thank you. Thanks. OK. Look forward to another Reflections program, and thank you for watching the program. I'm Fred Hammond, Beverly Historical Society.